Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Welcome back to another weekly update here in the garden. As always, we are here with our 12 Runts clones. For those of you who don't know exactly what's going on, feel free to jump back. There's been two updates really, maybe three if you, uh, if you count the I'm almost back update. It should get you up to speed on this grow, but uh, we are just getting into the fun part. So if you're just joining us now, it's about to get exciting. Uh, like I said, what we're looking at here is 12 Runts clones vegged about four, four and a half weeks. And today, we are 20 days down the line from the point where we switched them to 12-12, AKA the flowering cycle. And man, have they just boomed. I will say they were not exactly prime time ready to go. Uh, they could have been slightly healthier going into flower, but oh, have they turned around and just shot up and are loving life. So over the last few updates, uh, pretty much since the flip and uh, last week's update, the focus has been managing the canopy, building it from the first trellis. We laid the first trellis down. I think maybe you actually kind of saw it right after I laid it down. But anyway, we laid it down, which allowed us to splay our plants out to really kind of almost scrog them in a way, not a full blown scrog, but, but weave them under and widen them out. After that first layer of trellis, they grew up and we flipped them and got the second layer of trellis net on and that second net is for support. And uh, I wanted to put a third net on, but we ran, I ran on a trellis net, this or that. So what I've actually done is kind of raised the second net up a little bit over time to help support the branches as they grow. Creates a slightly bigger gap there, but should give us the support we need. So anyway, the first net was for shaping. The second net and possible third nets are for support. And now the canopy is twice as high over that point and just booming. So I was getting a little worried last week. Uh, really, you know, most strains I grow by day 14 to 17 have full pistols, bud production, and are off to the races. This girl, on the other hand, runs. Man, is she delayed. She is just getting to bud set. Like I said, this is day 20. I think it was day 18 I came in here and I was like, nice, finally, those are real, those are buds starting to set. Still, not as quick as I'm used to, but uh, I think they're doing okay. With all that delay and everything going on, it got me thinking, what could be going on? What could be stalling these girls? Maybe, it, maybe it's not the strain, maybe it's stalling. What could be going on? So I came in, checked everything out. There's definitely no light leaks. This place is dark as can be. I actually came in here super stoned the other day, sat right there on the floor, staring into the abyss that is the bottom of the plants there. Uh, had, a, had a blast. It was great to just sit in the dark and think. But anyway, long story short, no light leaks. Anything going on in here? Um, but got me thinking about nutrients and that's some of the things we haven't talked about this run and honestly there's not too much going but uh, i've been feeding these guys jacks 3-2 at uh, essentially a little over 3 to one exactly strength somewhere right around 3.6 to 2.4 grams per gallon but you'll notice there's no one in that formula i'm not supplementing any magnesium to this grow whatsoever uh, a couple times I've, I've tossed a little bit of magnesium nitrate into my mix and dropped the cal nitrate just a bit so kept my nitrogen levels the same, but uh, dropped calcium, raised magnesium, but, but really not enough or consistent enough to really talk about. It. So anyway, this has been fed 3-2, dropping the magnesium, and, and so far so good. No magnesium deficiency. Like I said, one time I threw magnesium nitrate at them, and I don't know if it was just because I had upped the light intensity at that point, and so they just started growing and you know just needed some time to, to get into their rhythm or what the deal was. So anyway, these have been fed 3-2 the whole time, and uh, so nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. And there was no signs that said there was a deficiency. But what I did do is when I started running these girls, oh, look at all those roots. When I started running these girls, uh, I wasn't quite getting runoff with this drip system. I was, I was keeping the plants moist, but I wasn't getting too much runoff. So I, I checked it. I made sure I got a good amount of runoff and I have been recently getting to the 10 to 20% range. But at the beginning of these plants, the first few weeks of veg and whatnot, they were, uh, not getting some runoff. So anyway, I actually had a little bit of buildup and I don't think it's anything major and we caught it. I'm getting, when I put uh, just tap water in there, so 200 PPM tap water, I'm getting right about 900 PPM out. So I am starting to get 
a little buildup. So what did I do? I just flushed. All I did was bring the, uh, brought the hose in here straight out of the garden hose and ran some water down there, tried to get the PPMs down. It's still not down, still up a little bit. Six, it went down from 900 to around five or 600. Um, may give them one more flush and then I will get them right back on their routine so they don't skip a beat. I just wanna flush the medium out and then essentially restart. And so, like I said, what got me thinking of that? It was just, they were slightly stalled into flower, so it got me running, got me checking all my things. I don't usually pH my system very much or check my pH, because I always know what it is, but this time I did, and we were right there in the low sixes like we always are. So it wasn't anything with that, um, which like I said, got me to my runoff. So just, just a heads up on that, always check it out. Always make sure your system's within spec, even if you, you let some things go, if things start going haywire, make, make sure you're checking all the factors so that's what's been going on and over the last week I have been keeping up with the lolly popping getting a little undercarriage cleanup going but this week the big topic is defoliation and man is this canopy gonna benefit so much from it uh, not only are the temps or the humidity just really high to begin with but this canopy is thick that's what I've been saying this whole episode is look how freaking thick this canopy is man just whew. No matter where you go, uh, it's 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 super branchy, and every one of those branches has got some some fan leaves along with it. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to go through, we're going to defoliate the whole canopy, and uh, I'm going to throw you up on a time lapse. But a lot of people want to know what do you what are you defoliating? Honestly, any developed leaf, excuse me, any developed leaf. So you see here's a node, this leaf, gone. Does that mean this leaf has to go? No, mango might take it off. It doesn't have to go, it could go. But anything that's a major petiole, like a main petiole, especially if you're an LED grower, it's probably got a red stem. Um, any of those have to go. And we wanna focus on the top. And if you're gonna be any lenient at all, you want the leniency to be on the bottom of the cannon because the, the point is we wanna get light penetration down. Yes, these are the solar panels. They absorb, they, they absorb light. They do process it in the process of photosynthesis and they do store sugars and AKA energy for the plants. But so do the new leaves. And what happens is because a leaf essentially absorbs 85% of the light, you're lucky if you get 15% of the light through this leaf matter, through a full developed leaf, if 15% gets down. So by almost, you know, 85% of the light being caught in this first canopy, how do you get it evenly down to the bottom? And so the, the thought is the sacrifice of a few is good for the many. And that is exactly what defoliation is. Yes, it does quote unquote sacrifice a little bit, but I have yet to see that. And that's what's kind of taught me over the years. The more and more I do it, the realize, the more and more I do it, the more and more I realize that I have never sacrificed any quality. quality. I have increased my production and my yield and my overall health of the canopy. Defoliation really does just by the drop in humidity, the mitigation of pests has always given me a much healthier canopy in the long run. And with how branchy my canopies have been in these recent years, uh, my training is just, it's always worked out and the photo boosts have a, they promote great branching structure. As we saw in the photo boost versus the white spectrum, they promote some good branching. Uh, defoliation really, really benefits. So like I said, before I got you in here, uh, some people just really don't get the concept. We're just taking as many of these main leaves off as we can. If they're not a main leaf and they're up on the bud, we want to take leaves off. We don't want to damage buds because once the leaves are gone, the buds and these small bud sets are what we're going to drive our photosynthesis and our growth. So that's what we're doing. So what I'm going to try to do is get you up in a corner here, give you a nice little time lapse like I always do. And uh, I'll probably get back at you tomorrow after they recover a little bit. They're always a little little down after they get beat up this uh, first night but uh, we'll be right back at it so before I do that I want to show you guys I partnered up with Miami mango I don't know if you've noticed in this uh, update so far but I'm wearing some sleeves and they got some sweet artwork on them if I do say so myself this is actually a Kobe image I believe this is one of my macro shots and mango reached out to me said he was making some sleeves wanted to put some some dope uh, some dope artwork on it and hit me up. So he's got his Miami Mango branded ones, but he's got about six of my images you can buy. So if you go to mangoclothing.com, you can get these. And all they are is just sleeves, just to help you protect your buds as well as your skin. So to keep your hair and your skin flakes off your buds, as well as your buds off your skin, vice versa. Uh, you know, it's a luxury item. If you 
you know, you don't need this to defoliate, but if you're into it or if you do it a lot, especially if you do it a lot, these are really come in handy. Um, he does a great microfiber and like material in here, very limited fibers, and that's kind of the, the selling point. Um, right now, not a huge deal, but for those of you guys who do a Miami Mango late day 42 defoliation, this will save your harvest so your customers aren't complaining or your people aren't complaining or yourself is not complaining about hairs or skin or whatever it is in your buds. Um, and if I do say so myself, I think the favorites are some of the Green Jeans Garden images. Got trichome shots like this. They've got a little, I've got a little tighter macro shot, closer trichomes, got some canopy shots, uh, the full deal. So if you're interested, MiamiMangoClothing.com, check them out. You don't have to tell them. There's no code, no discount. I don't get any kickbacks from this. I just did this because me and Mango are homies and uh, I want to give them some cool images. So obviously I got these for free because they're my own images on here. As you can see, it says Green Jeans Garden right there. Um, but check them out, it's worth it. So I'm gonna be wearing these instead of my flash outfit while I defoliate here, but uh, just wanted to share with you guys because like I said, it doesn't help me out, but it is freaking cool to see my images out in the wild defoliating. So let me get out this canopy, I'll see you soon. So done with side one or the left side here, as you can see, completely thinned out, uh, defoliated most of all the major fan leaves. Still have a couple left to do here, um, as well as we're actually two days later. So the plants are just, they, they hit their stride very next day, but bounce right to it. Um, and now what's, uh, you know, wasn't a, pr a main leaf before is now gonna branch out, but still a couple more to, uh, to go in there and truly, truly clean it up, but we'll, we'll call it good for now. Um, this side is essentially untouched. You'll see in the time lapse, I, I did go through and I, I took a couple out up top and, and you, I kind of bounce around here, but very, very little over here. Uh, you can see in the main part of the canopy, it, it's essentially untouched. And uh, compared to over here, completely different. And like I said, I'm gonna go in, thin a little out. So we're gonna run these side by side, quote unquote. Uh, I don't think there needs to be any light divider or any major difference. And uh, if for whatever reason there's a nutrient, um, a difference in nutrient requirement, I'll address it. Even though they're on a drip, we can, I can, uh, I can supplement with a little extra feed. And it, I don't anticipate it needing to happen, but uh, I'll do it accordingly. So it's kind of an on the whim or on the run side by side that we're gonna throw out here. But I think it'll. Uh, It'll be of interest to everyone. It'll keep me entertained in the grow and everything, and we'll see the results in the end. Um, Plant-wise, I don't, they're pretty fair, um, and I'm gonna lollipop this side, so it's not gonna go completely untouched, full gorilla. Um, I'm gonna lollipop it up just below the second trellis net there, kind of just above where they started at flipped, uh, and then clean up, do some de selective defoliation. I shouldn't even say selective defoliation, just a couple removal of some some key leaves that are blocking or laying on top of a cola uh, and we'll just trim it up and really clean it so that's my project oh, you guys need, need light uh, that's my project tonight and the next couple days here it's really clean up this side of the canopy didn't get to the other one but uh, here's the defoliated canopy completely you can totally see the wall uh, airflow is fantastic. Humidity in the room dropped instantly. If we did the whole canopy, it would as well. Um, but the airflow and the uh, the airflow and the light penetration here is just it's killer. So it's going to do what we've seen it do in many crops for the last year, or two years, pretty much running. I've been running hard defoliation for a while. Um, you can go back and look at some old crops where I was more selective, but this time we're just like I said, going to run it head to head and should be entertaining. As far as the run as, it go, as itself goes, uh, like I said, we're, we're finally hitting bud set and flower and it's coming on quick. We've already got some trichome development on these, uh, these crown fan leaves here. Uh, nothing really to smell yet, it's a little sweet. Nice, uh, smells, like, smells like cannabis, but nice sweet cannabis there. Um, but it's starting to get exciting, so. I'm ready to go. We'll hit, I guess, week four coming up here soon. I think we're actually into it. This is probably like day 22, I think. So yeah, we're technically into it here, but I'll catch up with you guys later in the week for the last update. So this was the defoliation 
uh, update. Hope you guys liked it. Like I said, pretty basic. Uh, go back at many of the other runs and check it out. But I think this is going to be key. We're going to just run it side by side and see what happens. Uh, you know, in the end, I don't think we'll, we'll compare yield. We'll compare bud size. Just, just compare it overall. Like again, it says it's not definitive or the uh, the one and done thing, but uh, it'll give us some data points that maybe I haven't had before. So hang in there. Um, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>